All right, so we've got. Uh, all right, so I think we've I think we've got enough folks here where we can we can go ahead and get started. Uh, we've got 20 folks on, so thank you everybody for for joining. Uh, this is the you know the the official kickoff of the Nawi data modeling and analysis uh, topic area for basically for our work from now until the end of, of calendar year. Uh, 22. So we're, we're very much, uh, very much excited to get this 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 uh, this work off the ground. Uh, we are, uh, you know, we got a lot of work ahead of us, but I'm I'm, I'm very excited for uh, for what this team can bring and sort of what this this new form of of now we sort of the next chapter now we is is going to bring. So um, this is. You know where we're at. I wanted to start out with some some brief introductions, and we do have 20 folks on, so uh, maybe the the best way to do this would be to say um, your name, your affiliation, and you know one sentence, one very short sentence about what uh, you think you're going to be working on within within Nawi uh, over the next uh, 15 months. So I will go down the. Uh, the list. Uh, my name is, I'll start with myself. My name is Jordan Macknick, so I'm the topic area lead for data modeling and analysis uh, with, within NAWI. I'm from NREL. I've been at NREL the last uh, 12 years, and my, a lot of my work has been focused on uh, energy and water issues, and for the last year and a half or so, I've been been leading the integrated data and analysis and now data modeling and analysis effort within NAWI, uh, which is focused which has been focused on the model development data uh, and the baselining and road mapping activities. Uh, maybe next I'll go to, to Jen Stokes Strout. Hi, I'm at LBL um, and I am working with Jordan on all the things he just mentioned. Um, so to keep it short, I'm just going to leave it there. Great, thanks. All right, Adam. Hey, Adam Atia, NETL. I'll be working on model development and my backgrounds in desalination, water reuse, a little bit of renewable energy. Great, Jeff Allen. Hello, I'm Jeff Allen. I work over at NREL, um, specifically the Computational Science Center, uh, and my background is PDEs, numerical PDEs, and optimization. Great, Shrikant. Hey, this is Shrikant. I'm a senior research staff uh, from uh, Oak Ridge National Lab. I've been here for the last uh, 11 years now. My background is in development of uh, computational frameworks for uh, electrochemical energy storage systems. Great. Andrew Lee. Hi, I'm Andrew Lee at NETL. Um, my background at this point is basically just um, developing tools for modeling. So the IDAS modeling platform is one of my biggest areas. Um, I'm guessing my work here is primarily going to be general model development and underlying infrastructure. Great. Jen Berry. Hey, I'm Jen. I work at NREL, um, and I have been specializing in communications and project management, and I've actually been working on NAWI stuff since before the hub was a hub, um, so many of you probably have seen me, um, but I've also been uh, helping with IDA and modeling and simulation before they were DMA, so I'll be helping with this work that way too. Great, thanks. Dan Gunter. Uh, hi, my name is Dan Gunter. Uh, I work at Berkeley Lab, and um, um, I'm a computer scientist. I'm primarily, I think, be working uh, with user interfaces. Great, Alex Dechenko. Uh, um, hello, I'm uh, I'm at Slack. Uh, I will be leading the analysis team, uh, and my my expertise are primarily in membrane systems, uh, both experimental and modeling. Great, Keith Beatty. OK, 
Okay. Hello, my name is Keith. Uh, I work at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. My background is in computer science, software engineering. I am I'm kind of assisting with um, the release management and software development of uh, the software that's going to be produced here. Great. Tom King. Hey, Tom King. I work for NREL. I'll be the front end web developer. Great. Ben Knuven. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm at NREL. Um, I think my primary role in this will be model development and just software infrastructure generally. Great. Austin. Hi, I'm Austin Ladshaw. I work at uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, and my primary work here will be in uh, testing and developing chemical modules in the uh, water tap project. Great. Mayo. Uh, hi, I'm Mayo Amstad, and I'm at Berkeley Lab. My primary role here will be model development as well. Great. James. My name is James McCall. I'm at NRO. I'll be working on the user interface outreach and probably the idiot trying to break the tool. All right, Ariel. Hi, everyone. I'm Ariel Miara. Um, I've been at NREL for about three years now. My background is in water resources, and I've been over the last few months uh, leading the, the development and analysis of Water Tap 3. Um, and I'll be working on some model development and analysis activities. David Miller. Hi, everyone. I'm David Miller at uh, NATL. Uh, I'll be leading the, uh, the modeling task, uh, uh, primarily from a strategic perspective. Tim will be uh, leading more from the uh, uh, implementation uh, perspective. Uh, I'm also the uh, lead and, and director of the IDAS program on which all these fun modeling tools are going to be based. Great. All right, Kinshuk. Hi, everyone. I'm Kinshuk Panda. I'm a postdoc at Endril. Um, I have a background in nonlinear PD constraint optimization and UQ, um, and I'll be facilitating research by Alex and Jeff Allen over here. Great. Kirby? Hi, I'm Kirby Sitterly. I'm at NREL. I've been working on the analysis and development of Wiretap 3, and I think I'll be doing something similar in this project. Great. Tim. Hi, uh, I'm Tim Bartholomew from NETL, and I'm leading the development of the model, model development. Great. John Weirs. Hey, I'm John Weirs at NREL. Uh, my background's in data science and application development, and I'm the tech lead for water dams and the data foundry, which I believe many of you will be using in some form or another. I think everyone, yeah. Uh, all right, and then uh, last but not least, Ethan. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Ethan. I work at NREL. Uh, my background's in simulation on the HPC. I'll be uh, helping carry out some analyses with these models and probably also developing some tools to aid that analysis. Great. Was there anyone that I happened to skip over? No, it doesn't seem like it. OK, uh, well, welcome, everybody. I, hopefully it was at least inter you know, great to hear the different people, the different institutions, uh, better understand uh, some of the background. Uh, there's a lot of different capabilities and a lot of different backgrounds within DMA, and I think that's that's exciting. And I think uh, these folks, everyone coming together with different skill sets, whether it's analysis related, model development related, optimization related, uh, you know, et cetera, I think is, is what's going to make uh, the work of this topic area, I think, very strong and very, very useful for Nawi as well as for the, I think, for the nation as a whole. So let's let's jump into the slides. Uh, and as we go through, feel free to, to, you know, jump in with any questions you might have. Um, and then we'll have some time at the end for, for overall discussions or check-ins or, or questions that people might have. So we did introductions. All right, so I, I did want to, you know, start out with something related to sort of the team dynamics and some of our guiding principles. We are all still, I think, at least, I think we're all still remote. I don't know if some Oak Ridge folks are back uh, in the lab or not, but, you know, it, it's definitely a different environment being 
uh, being remote and we have learned some good things uh, in the first year and a half of Naui and in the first year and a half of 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 remote work it's likely to continue so we just want to make sure you know i think we're we're starting things off on the right foot and hopefully these these principles you know can apply not only to our time as a dma topic area together as a whole uh, but also within within your your subgroups and, and subtasks as well um you know i i think some of these things are, are basic like preschool uh you know activities but um, we'll still we'll still go through them. I think you know as much as we can focus. Um, you know, try to keep multitasking and other things uh, to a minimum. It always happens. We know it's going to happen, uh, but just let's not plan on it uh, always happening. When possible, you know, it it can be nice to have your your camera on when it's just a, a discussion. If people are showing slides like me, it's it's less of a big deal because you can't see anyone anyway. But during discussion, it can be helpful. Um, during discussions, you know, participating but not dominating, I think is is important. Making sure everyone, you know, we all sort of have a collective responsibility uh, to make sure we are uh, hearing everyone and that we are uh, amplifying good ideas and giving credit to those uh, who who've come up with with some of those good ideas. Um, and even if we disagree, we do want to listen to and respect other people's viewpoints. And I think that's you know, and give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, we're all going to be wrong at some point, so we just want to make sure we. Um, you know, there's some some grace allowed here. Um, and then, you know, we uh, related to that, you know, we do want to focus, I think, on the topics and, uh, and the issues, not on individual personalities or, or things like that. So no, you know, blows uh, below the belt, if you will. Um, and then this last one, I, I think, is, is really important, especially, you know, for me, uh, which is to have very much very open communication and transparency. And I, I, I do want to commit to you that I, I will be as transparent as I can about um, changes that are happening, you know, with Nawi at that at the executive team level or anything else that might happen that might affect any of you. Uh, I will try to be, you know, communicate this and be as trans transparent as possible. Nawi has gone through a number of significant transitions and changes already in its the first 18 months, and I think some of these things um, could have been better communicated. And so I, I. I that's sort of my commitment to you to, to try to be as transparent as possible uh, and communicate uh, as much as I can, just so you're not caught off guard uh, by by emails or, 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 or comments from different people about things that are changing. So um, if is anyone, uh, if anyone, you know, vehemently disagrees with any of these, please let me know. But also, if you have other suggestions of things that you uh, you like for guiding principles, I think, uh, you know, please send on our way or, or chime in with them. All right, so a little bit more, you know, as we I want to talk a little bit about why we're all here together, because uh, some of some of you have been in, in calls together. Uh, you know, some of these people, some of the you know, many of the people during the introductions are probably the first you've ever heard of them or or whatnot. Um, so I did want to give a little bit of a, a, a quick history of, of how we got here, how now we data modeling and analysis. Came to be because um, uh, this did not exist. Data modeling and analysis did not exist a year ago. It did not exist when uh, we first started this. And it's data modeling analysis is essentially a combination of uh, a merging of a few things that existed before, some new things that have started, and some other things that have dropped off. And so, one you know key part of data modeling and analysis um, is we've taken over from the modeling and simulation topic area or MNS topic area, uh, which is no longer. And that's you know in many ways that the the biggest or largest part of that, I should say, is really the Proteus Lib team and the um, the efforts uh, that that David and, and Tim will be, uh, you know, have been have been leading and, and will be now uh, carrying forward with the water tap tool. Uh, it's also a combination of the other topic area that was integrated data and analysis, which is what I had led over the past 18 months, which in incorporated the water tap three modeling tool, the water dams data platform. And then all of the the Naui baselining and road mapping effort, which was a, a huge undertaking in in the first year, uh, and the other analysis of of challenge areas and pipe parity metrics that that was ongoing under IDA. And then lastly, the the third part that we're adding in that's new is our competitively awarded Naui projects. These are both internally funded projects that go through an internal RFP process, as well as externally funded projects that are going through external RFPs. And so uh, we will primarily be managing projects related to circular water economy, the electrification challenge area, as well as autonomous systems. 
So that's, I think, you know, really what we're we're seeing here are, are many of the people that uh, have been involved in the first year uh, are sort of being brought together in a, a much more, we're, we're hoping, a streamlined uh, data modeling and analysis group that brings together the, you know, the modeling activities that were happening across two topic areas before. Um, something that we'll get into a little bit further is, is some of the elements are no longer covered in NAWI and are now going to be covered uh, related to uh, another funding opportunity from AMO uh, related to water resource recovery. Uh, that's pick it, it's picked up some of the, the modeling uh, activities as well as some of the analysis activities, um, but there's still very close linkages. It's just technically not officially in, in NAWI, uh, despite our mutual dependencies. Um, all this, you know, so just to sort of to say, you know, DMA, NAWI's data modeling analysis is really designed to support NAWI's mission of enabling 90% of non-traditional source waters to achieve pipe parity. Uh, you know, that our goal is to help support that. And we're doing that through uh, providing a data collection, sharing, and dissemination platform, uh, which is DAMS. Uh, we're developing advanced modeling capabilities that can be used to inform different analyses. And so this is really that combined Proteus Lib water tap three model, uh, water tap going forward. We're also going to be conducting strategic analysis that supports Naui's future uh, investments uh, in R&D. So this is you know, analysis that's really targeted to support Naui's individual investments. What if we have five million dollars, what do we want to what do we want to invest that in at, for Naui? Uh, that's where this this analysis team helps inform that. And then lastly, uh, there are going to be some other you know, high impact analyses that are really not necessarily just to support NAWI investments, but are really meant to, to be high impact analysis for public dissemination and for things that could uh, you know, really uh, be impactful in the, in the academic and research and industrial world. So that is uh, at its most basic level uh, what we're seeing uh, for, for DMA data modeling and analysis. I did want to give each of the um, data modeling and analysis leads, you know, a, a brief opportunity just to talk a little bit more about what their activities are and what they're doing, as well as some of the, the near term activities. So um, I'll, John, if, if you don't mind, I'll, I'm gonna go to the next slide. And if you want to talk through, uh, give everyone sort of a, a brief intro to, to water dams and, and what you're going to be doing this year. Yeah, sounds yes. good. It's George. Um, uh, oh, I got oh, it. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'll be um, your point of contact, your main point of contact for the Data Foundry and Water Dams. These are two data management products. Um, if you've worked on Maui before, you've seen these before and you're very familiar with them. Um, they're essentially two different tools designed for two different purposes. The Data Foundry is a secure collaboration environment, allows you to share data in the cloud with the rest of your team also allows you to set up individual access controls and, and restrictions for individuals. It's designed to help you navigate um, NDAs, proprietary agreements with industry partners and make sure that your data is managed properly in a secure environment throughout the course of the research shared with all the right people and not shared with any of the wrong people. And then once you're done with the collaborating on data and building those products and it's time to disseminate those to the world and push them out, that's where Water Dams comes in. Dams is the public facing data management portal. It's a permanent home, uh, whereas Data Foundry is more like a sandbox. Once you publish to Dams, your data goes out to the entire scientific community and, uh, and it disseminates to a number of different sources, reg fix registrations and Google Scholar shows up on data.gov, et cetera. So, Dams is very much a, a publication portal, and uh, and that's where all the final outputs of project research and uh, and other efforts will go. Um, it's really designed to get the word out about your research, so there's a lot of advantages to submitting to Dams, and we'll be covering that more in future dates for data submission trainings and things like that. So, our plans for this year, uh, both of these platforms are up and running, and so our plans for this year are maintenance and support and to be there for you all help you with data management activities and data submission as needed. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, and just to reiterate, you know, the Foundry is sort of a internal uh, data sharing platform. Some of you might prefer to use Box or 
some uh, some other uh, platforms, or you might store you know store your code on GitHub. You know that's all still fine. Uh, but when we do publish data and release it publicly, that's where where water dams is really that that essential piece here. So we'll all have to be uh, most certainly uh, looking at and using water dams. Um, all right, let's move on to the modeling area. And here, uh, Tim and or David, uh, could you chime in here? Yeah, I'm, maybe I can present this. I realize I made a mistake with this format. You can go ahead and click four times, I think, to get through all of these. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> animation. OK, so for our modeling work, I, I showed two scopes here because they're very closely related across the NAWI and the AMO scope. And lots of the people here today are across both. So for NAWI, we are specifically limited to model development. So uh, at the top, it says develop water tap, uh, process model library to support NAWI analysis and optimization capabilities. Um, in this figure, it's showing the different steps we have for the model development, which is planning, building it in uh, in Python and PyMo and on the IDEAS compatible uh, model library, verify that they work, and then refine the models. Um, and so everybody that's on this call, we are somewhat involved in that process for the model development, um, or if you're part of the model development team. And uh, we are really trying to turn out uh, and focus in on a lot of prioritized models for NAWI. Um, we also have this AMO scope, um, which covers a lot of interactive uh, activities too. So it has its own model development side, but one of the things I want to point out that is most relevant for the NAWI work is the user support and release management. Um, we have, from the AMO side, that's where we're going to do our, our release, maybe the documentation type work, um, and other things associated with that. Um, and so that we're going to be closely related to working with the, the people that are doing the release management. And on this call, that is head by Keith, Keith Beattie. Um, and all of his funding is from AMO, but he's even on this call for a NAWI uh, project because it's very closely related. Um, and then also the user interface development follow, falls under um, the AMO activities. Immediate steps. Uh, for us is to work on a planning milestone, which is due very soon, uh, November 30th. And tomorrow, um, all the people that were named that are part of the model development task, we have another meeting. Um, the, the time of it, I guess, if you're part of that task, you should have an invite. If you don't, please reach out to me. It is 12 to 1 tomorrow, um, Eastern time. Uh, so. We have that meeting to talk about that milestone. And then we're starting work on integrating WaterTap 3 and Proteus Lib. And the full integration of that is due March 30th. And then uh, also during this time, we're identifying onboarding needs for the full team and host workshops and smaller meetings. Um, I think because there's a range of people that have been involved in Proteus Lib or WaterTap 3 or new people that are just joining the team, most of this onboarding will be done on a small team meeting basis rather than a larger workshop um, just because people are at different levels. Um, so uh, yeah, those are the immediate steps for the modeling side of things. Great, thank you. All right, and then on to analysis, Alex. Um, hello. So. Uh, you, I guess you can just click through all of it as well. Um, it will kind of all relate from the figures, but that's fine. Uh, so the, the analysis team, uh, the, the objective, uh, our objective is to provide a quantitative analysis of how component improvements impact pipe parity metrics for different water treatment processes, uh, supporting the navy leadership as well as internal projects in direct research. Uh, and basically, uh, we are, uh, as shown in this chart on the, on the left, um, we uh, we primarily work on re receiving requests for analysis from DMA, MMM, PI, and I, uh, and we build the flow sheets, modify them as needed, working closely with the modeling team, so Tim, 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 uh, and then we do internal analysis, uh, curate the results, and report them back out. 
uh, and that's our general workflow. And the idea that we want to provide repeatable, reproducible. I pushed B too. You pushed B. Good job. John, do you want to go uh, mute, please? Working on B. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and basically what we want to do is provide reproducible and repeatable analysis of different processes in a rapid manner so we can support the broad range of projects that Tandy is working on. Um, and our immediate steps right now is formalize analysis workflow so we want to understand what the analysis needs are. Uh, and also uh, prioritize the process and projects that we'll be doing analysis over the next four quarters. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, as, as you mentioned, you know, this is going to be very important work analysis work to help support not future NAWI investments as well as support the project team. So um, there's a, a lot of, of work to be done. Uh, and then the last piece that I, I wanted to um, highlight that's part of DMA are other internal and external competitive projects. And so these are things, as I mentioned, through RFPs uh, that, that people could uh, be a part of. Some of you might be a part of these uh, either now or sometime in the future. Uh, we will start off this this year, this, this fiscal year, with three uh, circular water economy projects. And these are really looking at, these are projects that are trying to look across the Naui A prime areas. So autonomous, precise, resilient, intensified, modular, electrified, and seeing you know what sort of impacts they can have in different contexts. So an agricultural context, for example, an industrial context, and then a uh, large municipal context. We anticipate some other additional uh, projects coming in through via electrification and autonomous areas, uh, but those have yet to be to be defined or, or clarified quite yet. But those are another you know sort of part of the the world and so when, of, of DMA. So when we have these sorts of joint calls again, we'll we'll be adding new people on for for these circular water economy projects as well as for the uh, the others that, that may be coming. Um, I think it's also just important to reiterate a few different uh, you know linkages and other dependencies that that we are seeing just so everyone is is very explicitly aware of this. Uh, I did mention earlier, you know, with the data and water dams that, you know, we we do anticipate that water dams, you know, could be the source of much of the data that is being used in the modeling and in the analysis activities, uh, and that a lot of the data that has been produced under NAWI research, you know, once published, once vetted, et cetera, could be housed on dams. And so we, we do anticipate um, dams feeding those activities as well as vice versa after the modeling and the analysis team you know, at publications, DAMS is the uh, the venue by which that that information is is sort of made available to the public. Um, so I think that's an important thing to reiterate. Secondly, is you know I think from maybe hopefully from what Tim and from what Alex described, you did see that connection between the modeling and analysis activities. Just to put it you know very bluntly, that the it, it will be many of the analysis activities uh, that Naui leadership decides on that will in the end drive much of the modeling new model uh, you know unit process model development so if we just if we need you know better representation of electrochemical processes or uh, whatever it might be from the analysis perspective that is going to help drive um, any changes in direction for the modeling team that being said the modeling team also will have its own set of, of priorities and things that it, it knows it has to do but um, there is uh, that relationship and that that relationship uh, is is still evolving, and it's and it's really happening through what we're calling these prioritization efforts. And these are going to be quarterly meetings uh, with uh, that include, uh, you know, Alex with the 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 analysis team, David and Tim with the modeling team, uh, Jen and myself uh, on this, as well as the other topic area leads, Megan Motter, the research director, Peter Fisk, uh, where we we sort of have a check in to make sure that we are investing our our analysis uh, efforts in the highest priority areas um, and so that's you know something that uh, will be new this year but it is it is something that is important that we do have to um, be very clear about is that there could be you know instances where we do change um, priorities it's it's going to be my goal to make sure that you know everyone on the analysis team has enough time and, and clarity and certainty to do good analysis and everyone on the modeling team has enough clarity and certainty uh, to do the relevant model development activities. 
um, but just just so we're aware of this, these quarterly uh, reprioritization or just assessment meetings uh, will be taking place. And I think those are important for everyone to just be aware that those are happening. Um, and then the last thing is is something that you know Tim had met. I you know, briefly talked about. Tim briefly talked about is this AMO other funding opportunity 2336, and that is R and D for Advanced Water Resource Recovery Systems. This is a it was a funding opportunity out of Advanced Manufacturing Office or AMO. So the same office and the same technical monitor that's funding Nawi. Uh, but it was uh, this particular project is in general more focused on wastewater treatment systems and, and resource recovery. That being said, they wanted to use uh, tools that were essentially the same as WaterTap3 as well as Proteus Lib. And since uh, at that Nawi level, we were you know combining you know merging those two tools uh, to form WaterTap. Uh, you know it just made sense for them to to do that. Over the course of the the Nawi negotiations as well. Uh, we sort of realized that now he was focusing more internally on analyses to support investments, but this AMO work was was really you know much more geared towards supporting the broader water resource uh, research industry uh, you know sector and and everyone working in there. So that's why we're seeing um, you know now we modeling activities really you know more focused on internal now we um, analysis needs. And uh, this AMO work is where the user support, release management, user interface and experience, validation, use cases, all those sorts of things are now going to be housed under that AMO work. But we're all, you know, I, I like to think of us as one team. We have a, you know, sort of a core modeling team across both projects, the same leadership uh, for, for development. So, you know, and the, much of the data collection is going to be, you know, have synergies. And so I really want to, encourage us to think of ourselves not as an AMO team and a NAWI team, but really as as one team. Uh, it's just a matter of, um, you know, in the end, or, you know, which which task number are you charging to? But um, for us to be successful, both in NAWI as well as in AMO, I think we need to we need to act as as one team. Um, because this is probably, you know, could be confusing to, to many of you. I did, you know, want to have some sort of org chart of at least an organizational um, diagram that would show the differences. So on the right side, you see the NAWI activities and its model development and analysis and data. Um, you can see the different activities. It's a very similar parallel structure uh, on the AMO side. Um, on, the, on the left side is just more activities related to the model, uh, uh, model development and some different analysis activities. We also have included, you know, different players. So hopefully you can find your, you know, see your name and see where you fit. Uh, hopefully that that aligns with what you said in your introductions today. And, uh, you know, I, I, this is really meant to be a resource for you. Uh, you know, you can save it or, you know, we're probably not printing things out these days, but hopefully it's a good reference for you for just to know uh, where different people sit and, and who's doing what and who's involved in what when we're on these these various calls with different people. So uh, that's meant to be a resource. OK, so I think we're getting close to being able to open things up more for for discussion and and talk. I, I think the when we, we think about what are our next steps here, uh, each individual task you know, is going to have their own set of, of meetings. And so some of those may have already kicked off. Um, Tim mentioned one for the model development team that's happening tomorrow. Um, there's going to be other activities with data, other activities on the analysis team uh, as well they're, they're, that are going to get started. But from here on out, you're going to be more led by, um, you know, Alex and John and, and David and Tim on, on those individual meetings. So you'll see, see less of me. Um, other you know, important things uh, to note, though, is that, you know, we are going to be having, um, you know, to do some monthly reporting and, and quarterly reporting. And there we do have some templates created for DOE and uh, California Energy Commission uh, because many of our projects that involve any performers in California will, will have to do this California Energy or CEC reporting. Um, and so Jen uh, Barry, who's on the call, um, can will be walking you th through those and that'll be primarily for the, the subtask leads, uh, people leading diff different elements just to make sure we are um, Providing the right uh, feedback to DOE and CEC, and this is this is important also for our cost share. So now he is required to have a certain level of cost share, and with that cost share, um, 
you know, that we would receive from CEC, we have to do some reporting. And so, Jen, I don't know if there's anything else you'd want to say about the DOE and CEC reporting templates or things other than um, to look out for an email from you. Um, but uh, here's an opportunity, Jen, if you'd like. Uh, thank you for, uh, thank that. You for that. I'm echoey. I'm echoey. But I don't but know I don't. why. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, they're actually still kind of talking a little bit about how some of the reporting will look for this. So I will just circle back with everybody uh, to let you guys know. Um, we've got some good systems in place that we've used for modeling and simulation. A few of you are familiar with those. So um, we may just use that going forward. But I'll touch base once I have more concrete details. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. So forgive me when I'm annoying. Yeah. You're never annoying, Jen. Um, OK, great. So there's that. Um, the, the other, this is where I think I might want to open it up a little bit for a more um, discussion and, and conversation. So, you know, right now, this is sort of the kickoff for the, uh, the, the topic area at, as a whole, and which incorporates, you know, the data activities, the modeling activities, and the analysis activities. All of those efforts will be a lot of work. Uh, all those efforts will, you know, you'll have your own meetings, you'll have your own reporting, your own updates. Uh, my question here, and this is sort of opening it up for everyone, is, you know, is there a desire for for this team to have, you know, may, maybe quarterly meetings where it's it's this crew, you know, it's sort of the, you know, the DMA uh, team as a whole getting together. And that could be something where, you know, we meet for an hour, an hour and a half and uh, sort of sharing updates or sharing up, uh, you know, insights from things that people have done, or it could be giving people the opportunity to give a, you know, quick 20 minute presentation on a really cool paper or a really cool functionality you've just developed um, like that. So I, I, I want to see, you know, is that something that people would, would like to see or is that um, too many meetings? One alternative I have thought I will say uh, would be, you know, maybe we could send out sort of a, a monthly or bi-monthly uh, email that's sort of like a newsletter where you can you can get those updates or it's sort of quick bullet points about, hey, this is what the, you know, the modeling team's up to. Here's what the analysis team has done. Here's what the, the data folks have done. Um, so I'd like for people that here to chime in uh, if they would have preference preferences either way. I'm, I'm open to what is going to be most useful for everyone here. Um, I do think there's value in us ever being aware of what's going on, but uh, I, I'm not sure of your preference for the the venue for how you want to be aware, be made aware of what's going on. Jordan, I guess I'll I can chime in. in. Sorry. Um, and just say, it seems like the project has a lot of interdependencies, like connections that we want to ensure are um, fully, uh, all the synergies are captured. So I, I am inclined to think that requires an, a venue with some discussion opportunity rather than a newsletter. Okay. I agree. I do like the idea of having some kind of collective group meetings. I think quarterly is probably fine and you might increase the frequency as we get closer towards certain milestones that uh, require more closely coupled integration. Okay, and, and are, there, are there dissenting opinions or dissenting views? If if not, if everyone's okay with that, I guess what what would you th what would you all think might be the best mechanisms for this? So you know, you you guys mentioned you know making it uh, somewhere where you can have some discussion. Do you want to have uh, you know presentations, or would you want something that's more of a set agenda or something that's more general updates? What you know what would fulfill that that need for you? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I do like the idea of having a set agenda, but my concern with that would be how much uh, work are we spending actually making a presentation for, you know, a meeting that's only quarterly versus, you know, just doing something like updates. But uh, I don't know what could be more. I mean, maybe a set agenda with presentations is more useful for the group as a whole. But how much of a burden does that become? Yeah, yeah, I, I do not want to create some some burdens that are that are end up not being useful either for you or for the for the team as a whole. And so uh, that's one thing, you know, why I haven't, you know, come out saying it's it's required. Um, you know, maybe some some more informal updates could be a good uh, mechanism to start with. And if if that's not. You know, satisfying our needs, maybe we can then bump it up to. You know, more more of a formal presentation, but maybe we can um, start with just some some more informal updates and and uh, on key points, and then have some, you know, highlighted areas where we we know we'd want to do that, as Jen mentioned, you know, that coordination or where we know we have major dependencies. So uh, one thing, this is Dan. I'll I'll jump in and say one thing that we've I've seen for larger teams is that we use the <coughs> the code development teleconferences as a coordination mechanism and a lot of topics that are come up there. Um, so I don't I just wanted to raise that up and get a feel for how many people think they're going to or not going to be attending those. Um, assuming that we have some sort of mutually agreeable time. Or I, I don't know, you didn't really you didn't touch on that, and, and I think it's sort of related to this um, sort of updates uh, aspect. Could you explain a little bit more about that, Dan? So I can, although Keith Beatty might want to jump in since he's the one who runs them. But um, these are software to basically for for example, for ideas, we have weekly software development teleconferences that pretty much everyone who's developing software on the team attends. It's a one hour and we go through uh, GitHub issues, but also general issues come up um, in that. And it's remarkably useful for whatever has bubbled to the top in the last week. Um, so I'll let Keith jump in and elaborate. It's basically where we coordinate the development of the tool. Um, make sure that we're hitting our milestones, um, put things on the roadmap, um, and then have an opportunity to at least start any technical discussions that might need to be resolved in the context of doing the development. So well, like Dan says, it, it can go it can go high level and it can go low level. So um, of course everyone's always invited to it, you know, welcome to attend. There's nothing secret here, but um, it is a good question as to how this would fit into the larger uh, Structure of the project management. Yeah, I think I, interject really quick here, Jordan. I, at least Keith and Dan, when I imagine this, it's mostly the, the that like GitHub development, right? Walking through the issues and PRs and milestones are, are like the model development type work. So this does not include like the analysis group as much or the data uh, groups as much. Um, that like at least like John's team. Um, so yeah, we're definitely going to have that code development meeting that spans ammo and uh, uh, Maui, the water tap tool development. Um, although I think it's a smaller subset than this full kickoff meeting, um, at least my interpretation. De definitely, yeah. So I, you know, that that's all good points, and it, I I think I agree with you, Tim, that a, those weekly calls, you know, are definitely going to be you know necessary for you in that model development, but are not going to be as relevant maybe for the analysis or uh, or data folks or even some of the the full model team. Um, so you know, I I think that might be overkill, but I'm also wondering, you know, if you are all already going to be setting up that time, you know, maybe that's an opportunity for um, you know, once a quarter for the, the team to sort of jump in on that existing time slot potentially um, and sort of bring up some of the other, you know, into those updates. Maybe there can be some analysis updates and some, uh, some data uh, updates, you know, as, as needed. 
that's maybe that's one potential solution to help with with the scheduling. Um, I don't know how you, you would feel about giving up one of those meetings though for the a broader topic area meeting. I think that could be helpful for the scheduling because we at least know like like I think half the team is like on the model development side of things, so that they would be available. Um, Ariel just had a, a comment in the chat that I think was relevant that quarterly presentations before uh, the, the modeling and the quarterly reports and stuff like that could be helpful to like practice before the DOE leadership. However, oftentimes when we're getting towards the quarterly milestones, we really need those code development uh, things. It's like, well, what is going to make it to the release? So if that I don't know would be nice to jump on, but like early in the quarter, mid quarter type updates that we want to do, we could hijack it there. But I think like the late quarter stuff, we're probably going to want the code development needing to stand on its own. In the beginning of each quarter, <laughs> after people are exhaling, after making the release happen. OK, um, if if no one else has any other, you know, major ideas or, or new ideas, maybe on that topic, we can we can move on. Um, but it, what I'm getting is that there would be some value in having some you know, topic area wide meeting. Uh, potentially we can we can hijack one of the, the code developer meetings. If not, we'll find another another venue or another way to do it. But um, it seems like maybe quarterly could be appropriate. Um, as Okay, so uh, we'll go from there, and I think we'll 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 try to nail down some of those specific details, um, maybe off offline or via or via email. We can do that. So, um, and then the the last thing um, that I that I have here is is just on communication preferences. So, um, Naui itself uh, uses multiple mechanisms for for communication. Uh, now we use some parts of now we use teamwork, other parts of now we use box, other parts of now we, uh, you know, use the foundry uh, just for storing information and, and, and sending people, you know, information. Um, teamwork sort of has a additional project management capabilities. Um, other people sort of convey things via email. Um, that's sort of what people are primarily doing within now but, you know, other projects we, we're all probably on. Slack or we're all you know using other forms of communication and or file sharing. Um, my initial, you know, I guess what I wanted to get if, if anyone had any strong, you know, preferences or desires to advocate for a certain mechanism for how how we want to communicate um, and how you'd want to have certain shared documents that are that are available. I think at a bare minimum, you know, on the foundry. Um, as, as John mentioned, you know, that's a, a spot where we can at least have a, we already have, you know, uh, some folders created on that and I can, we can make sure everyone on here has access to those, but there we can put things like our, you know, SOPO, other sort of broadly shared documents um, that are for the topic area as a whole. Um, and then we can do communication when there's updates or when there's things that, that are happening. Um, you know, I think the sort of the default is just via email, but I wanted to see um, if anyone on this call had any other preferences for either a, you know, communication platform, a project management platform, a file sharing platform that they would like to, to strongly advocate for. I think now could be a helpful time to, to suggest that. Sure. Um, one that comes to mind for me is Slack. Uh, at least for Proteus Lib development and the IDS team, we use it extensively for quick communication. And even some of the NREL folks that were part of our Proteus Lib development, uh, that was our main form of communication. So we have a Naui Slack uh, that I think Keith is the owner of, but that is one venue that at least we would be using frequently. And of course, we use Box for files and stuff, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I can invite whoever wants to join to the Slack workspace. Okay. Um, I you know I, I like Slack. I've used it for a couple other projects. Um, I would be you know willing to to give that a shot. Um, it's it's something that has been effective 
effective in those other projects. Um, does, does anyone on the call, is anyone not able to, to access Slack or have a strong uh, hatred for Slack? That <laughs> maybe we would not want to do that. Can we say both? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, maybe we can uh, you know, we can work on getting a you know DMA um, relevant uh, sort of carved out space for us uh, within you know or you know, some sort of thread for us uh, just for DMA issues, and we can give that a test run. We'll probably still stick with some of the emails too, uh, but just to to go with that um, as an experiment. Um. And I was just going to say for, I um, appreciate somebody mentioned Box, um, since that is one of the primary tools for the NAWI leadership team, if it's possible for us to do at least quarterly reporting um, that way, that would be helpful for me to just keep everything straight. I really don't want to do that via email if possible. I'm begging you. <laughs> yeah, Jen's going to make our lives a lot easier. So I think that's a... I think that's a good idea. Once Jen, once we have more information about the reporting, um, yeah, if we can find ways to make sure that sort of stays exclusively on box, that would be really helpful. Okay, thank you. All right. Are there other other topics or other things that people would want to bring up in general? Um, other questions that you have we didn't answer or other other things that are going on you'd, you'd want to bring up? So uh, Jordan, this is Shrikant. Um, I have a, a quick question about this uh, competitive projects uh, that you uh, brought up uh, within your slides. So we do have a current set of uh, model development plan right now, but you said that uh, things could change as or, or evolve when these competitive projects uh, um, come in. Come into uh, come in place. So, how does it supposed to work? Are we supposed to be part of the competitive process, or should we? Are they anticipating the model development to be done after, uh, for these uh, competitive projects, either internal, external? Like, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a little uh, not clear on uh, the logistics there. Yeah, it's it's a really good question. You know, I, I think the and and it. We didn't go into a lot of depth on on what that process will look like, but when we have you know things that might affect our prioritization, whether it's new competitively awarded projects or other analysis that might come, uh, you know, as arises as a as a major need for the hub, that's something that you know the the task leads. So so Alex, uh, David, and Tim. Uh, Jen and myself, other other folks within Naui are going to have a, a say in that. And to me, it's it's got to be clear that you know. To me, it's it's an important priority that um, the model development team you know needs sufficient time in order to develop models and uh, do the appropriate vetting before they're used for analysis. And that it's it's not sustainable and not acceptable to sort of cut people off halfway through and then you don't have a a functioning model to that would allow you to do some meaningful analysis and so um, how but how that will play out in terms of when a new high priority analysis or model development need comes to the forefront that's sort of i think really on uh david and tim to think about how are we going to you know change up that the allocation of resources or the prioritization of, of what those modeling activities will look like in order to make sure that we can still accomplish what we need to, even though if we might have something that's maybe a, a quick turnaround or something else that might that might arise that might be bumping something that was in the queue uh, further down the list. But again, that's it's not something that's going to be coming from from the top and everyone has to jump uh, because that's not that's not a good way to, to build models and it's not a good way to do analysis. So uh, would we be part of the competitive proposals? So you can be certainly. So when uh, when there's going to be you know new calls and so I think 
you know, potentially we could see some new calls at the beginning of 2022. So early 2022, there might be some new calls for internal proposals or external proposals. Uh, yeah, you could you could lead a lead a proposal or jump on a team that's leading a proposal for that. Okay. Thank you. Other questions or, or comments that people have? All right. If if not, okay, that, I think that's that's great. We'll we'll end a minute early. Um, and like I said, you're you're going to get a lot more guidance, and I'll have a lot more detailed things to talk through with your individual task lead going forward, uh, whether it's through the modeling or the analysis or or the data piece. Um, so there's, I think you can get ready for a lot for a lot more detailed guidance. But this is just sort of at that uh, at that topic area level. So. Thank you, everybody. Uh, appreciate the you you jumping in, and we're looking forward to to working with you all uh, in DMA going forward. Thank you, Jordan. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Take care.